Hello, and welcome back to my review of the PG Zeta Gundam. In this part, I'll be taking a detailed look at the individual parts and weapons of the kit. So starting from the bottom, the feet are just going to be made of some very large white and red pieces with the giant gray piece there. In terms of articulation, you're going to be able to move the toes up like so, and down like so for the transformation. The heel can also move down. You'll notice that you can still see those silver pistons from the inner frame, but only at very certain angles. So on the ankles, you're still going to get the spring that allows the feet to spring up and down ever so slightly. The front armor can move up and down pretty nicely and a bit of side to side wiggle room. Similarly, the feet are going to have a good range of front and back movement, thanks to the ankles, and just a bit of side to side movement. If you lift the ankle armor up, you're still going to be able to get a glimpse of the silver pistons, though they're mainly going to be hidden unless you look at them from very specific angles. And lastly, the vents here still open up, but you might want a pencil or something to help slide it open. So as you move up the leg, you really get an idea of just how plain the outer armor is. These are just very big white pieces. I think this here is pretty much the only panel line on the entire leg. You're gonna get a bit of detail with these yellow pieces, as well as a bit of the inner frame poking through, but this is pretty plain especially by modern Gunpla standards. So for the upper leg, you're going to get a bit of inner frame detail. On here and the kneecap, you're going to get the silver piston showing through. On the back, you get some nice piping. The flap from the inner frame is preserved, and this helps with the knee bend. Speaking of which, for the knee bend, you're still going to get a solid 160 degree, and once you bend it, you're going to expose the front piston. Unfortunately, there the thigh piston that's uh, here on the inner frame is going to be completely covered by the thigh armor. And since the thigh armor doesn't slide around, you aren't going to be able to see it at all. Now for the transformation, you're going to be able to slide the knee in. The parts back here slide into place very nicely. And then you can just bend the thigh down. And of course for the feet, just point everything down so it looks like a thruster. For the open hatch gimmick, you can open up this large panel on the side of the leg. Shows also a nice inner frame. This isn't part of the instructions, but you can push down the kneecap armor, which also exposes more inner frame. So now onto the waist, the individual front skirts can flip around, no problem. The front crotch piece can also move around, and doing so will expose the silver piston in the front. Otherwise, it's the same with the back. You're going to be able to slide this out and expose a piston. It's just one full piece back here. You do get some nice connection points and five red thrusters. But overall, it's a pretty plain looking waist, if not functional. So the side skirts are going to be built separately and they actually attach onto the leg unit as opposed to the waist unit. For articulation, there is going to be a hatch here that you can open up for the beam saver. It isn't part of the open hatch gimmick, but I like to open it anyways for the uh, exposed mode. And here is just the attachment point it can be used to attach onto the top of the leg. The chest here is going to be void of actual articulation outside of the transformation. However, you can slightly transform it to pull out the cockpit. And once you do that, if you lift up the red piece, and lift down this red piece, you'll see the small Camille figure. Now, the orientation of the pilot figure can be changed by dragging this slot back and forth. And what that does is it allows you to transform between the mobile suit configuration and the wave fighter configuration. The two flaps on the chest will flip open for the open hatch gimmick. I think the inner frame detail will look great if you painted it up. The shoulder and arms look very nice armored up. I think the sheer amount of colors coupled with the vents and the inner frame poking through makes the plain outer armor a lot less noticeable. So in terms of articulation, the shoulder flap can move up and down and the vent can slide in and out like so. The arm can rotate 360 here at the shoulder and it can bend 180, no problem. You're also gonna get a bit of side to side movement here at the elbow. So the back of the arm has an attachment point for the shield, and you can extend this attachment point to attach on some missile launchers, as well as expose some chrome pistons. This also is how you open up the arms for the open hatch gimmick. 
Now here you're also going to get a tab that you can slide down to expose some more missiles. So the wrist here is going to have a bit of movement thanks to the piston. It's also going to have some nice pivot movement due to the palm mechanism. And of course the fingers are all individually articulated and there are some holes here for the weapons to peg into. The backpack is going to be a nice dark blue with a nice red trim. The white flap on the top can wiggle around ever so slightly. And on the back, you're going to get the same color scheme and you can have a mounting mechanism that attaches into the backpack and it can uh, spread out to accommodate the Wave Rider transformation. So to transform it, you're going to slide out the main wing by pushing here. And doing so will we'll expose this empty cavity with some LED wiring. Uh, they're supposed to fit in these channels, but sometimes they do tend to fall out like here at the top. But moving on transformation, once you slide out the entire wing, you're going to be able to also flip out the wing tip. It takes a bit of finicking, but once you do, you're going to slide it out like so. I like how there's a red piece here. It's going to be on a spring, and once the wings are fully folded out, it's going to spring into place to cover up the uh, gaping hole here. There's also going to be a nice clear piece at the tip for the LED. And overall, I think it's a very nice wing. It's uh, got the same aesthetics as the outer armor, but there aren't that many panel lines. But overall, I think it looks pretty good, though it is pretty heavy for a backpack. So the tail stabilizer is relatively simple. You're just going to get some large pieces that you sandwich together. Here you're going to get some clear pieces to show through the LEDs. And in terms of movement, you can just slide the tail up for the transformation. You're going to get an attachment point here that attaches into the back of the Zeta Gundam and it's just going to be a singular polycap which I am a bit skeptical about because polycaps are known to be a little bit weak and the tail stabilizer along with the backpack are pretty heavy. So I'm pleasantly surprised by this head sculpt. I initially thought I wouldn't like it due to the large eyes but after seeing it in person I think it looks pretty good. My favorite part is probably going to be this mask sculpt. The Zeta Mask is pretty unique among Gundams due to the lack of the red goatee. I think that the perfect grade captures it very well. So you're also going to get some nice Vulcan detail as well as some vents. I also like how they sculpted camera detail onto the front camera. The back camera is also going to similarly have a bit of detail but not the round kind like on the front. In terms of movement, you're going to be able to slide the V fins together for the transformation. They're on these locking teeth mechanisms, so when you move one around, the other will move accordingly. So for the open hatch gimmick, the sides and top of the head are going to open up. I think it looks really good, especially from the back and the top, where you can really see the inner frame of the head. This kind of reminds me of those very large Gundam busts that have a ridiculous amount of details. So moving on to weapons, the Zeta's beam rifle is ridiculously long and I think it looks pretty good here in the perfect grade, though there is going to be a giant seam line running through the top and bottom of the gun. The handle here has a tab that you can pull out, and once you do, you can slide that into the palm of the hand, and it should sit in nicely, though it is only for the right hand. The ammo pack on the top can also be removed. So in terms of gimmicks, the sight and the barrel are both going to be spring-loaded. And what's going to happen is you're going to be able to play with the switch here to lock them in their retracted state. So the best way I found is to first fold down the sight and then grab a pencil or something of the sort, move the handle around, and then notch in this switch. And when you uh, notch it into place, it's going to uh, hold the sight in its retracted position. And once you do that, you can also just fold in the barrel, and it should also hold its retracted position. And if you fold up the handle and pull out this tab here, you're going to be able to attach this shortened rifle into the Wave Rider mode with the attachment here. But in terms of the actual gimmick, if you pull down the handle again and pull it past its normal position, these parts are going to shoot out because it releases the switch. Like so. So the Zeta shield has always been a little weird in my opinion. Obviously it needs to pull double shifts as a shield and a nose cone, but as a shield I think it offers very little protection. In terms of moving parts, you're going to be able to slide this up and down like so. And the mechanism down here to attach it onto the arm is weirdly complex because it needs to attach both in the MS mode and the Wave Rider mode. 
So you're gonna get two of these small, nice beam sabers. Just like the rifle, you're gonna be able to pull out a tab to attach it into the palm of the hand so it can hold it solidly. Now this is pretty simple, you're just gonna attach on this massive beam effect part, and it slots in like so. So the LED beam saber is gonna be noticeably larger than the regular beam saber. You're also going to need a custom attachment point that just kind of clips on and allows it to have the peg that attaches onto the palm of the hand. The saber should normally light up by just twisting the handle here, but due to the fact that this battery is 20 years old, I don't think it works anymore. Not the biggest loss in my opinion since I'm not a big fan of LEDs. So you're also going to get two of these blue missile pods. You're just going to get a blue cover as well as some nicely molded missile detail. And the real gimmick about this is that it's going to be able to plug into the back of the arm, like so, to give it some more extra firepower. So lastly, we're going to have the metal landing gear. They're going to be mainly die-cast metal with a piece of plastic on the bottom. You're going to get three of them. Two of them are going to be identical, while one of them is going to have a unique smaller red landing gear. So taking a closer look, they're very nice, and I think that they should hold up the Wave Rider mode very well since they are made of metal, and the Wave Rider mode is going to be very heavy. So this has been my look at the individual parts of the PG Zeta. They're all nicely complex, as you'd expect from the Perfect Grade line, if not a little under detailed. So please comment, like, subscribe, and check out the next part where I'm going to look at the assembled Gundam.